And so the core of this discussion is what I call the recipe for the future. Uh, digitization, decarbonization, and reformation. Quite clearly, technology is everywhere. That's digitization, uh, our digital transformation of everything. Decarbonizing all systems around us, that is clearly happening right now, and it's a huge shift, probably the biggest shift in the next 50 years, or let's say from 2020 on to 2050. And reformation means changing how we think about the world, what we want, reforming our financial logic, our stock markets. And we have to take a holistic view when we look at this. When you're looking at the water industry, it isn't just going to be about water, right? It's about agriculture, about food, about how we have enough energy. It's about pollution and the environment. It all hangs together. Take a holistic view and you'll be successful. So when we take that look at the future at digitization, there's 10 different game changes that are going to be so important for us. I'm going to zero in on just seven of them for your turf. Data is the new oil. It's all about data. And I mean, I've said this for 15 years. It's finally true. The data industry is more powerful than the oil industry. Well, you can argue they're kind of hanging together, obviously, right? And of course, the cloud and the Internet of Things, it's becoming like the new factory, the new place where we create things, a new living room also, right? Artificial intelligence is the new electricity. It's the power that connects everything. And blockchain makes that possible as well by being the new way to transact and reducing costs and increasing speed. 3 day printing, clearly the new way of manufacturing. We will not be shipping a lot of things. We'll make them on the fly, on location. That will be totally normal by 2050. And virtual reality, the new way of looking at things. And I talked about that earlier already. So in this context, it's really important that when we look at all that stuff coming in, that we protect what makes us human. In fact, I think we're going to need sort of a human protection agency you know, to make sure that we don't get lost in here, that we protect our data, our privacy, our right for mystery, the right to be forgotten, as the European Union says, right? And that we can still be human, because machines are not human, we are not machines, right? to make sure that we maintain our, uh, our independence and our sovereignty as humans. So three trends are happening here at the same time. Exponential change, leaping, 4, 8, 16, 32, Convergent industries, for example, the entire energy is converging, of course, with the data and computing industry, and combinatorial products, which means things that come in together and create new products, for example, uh, what happened in cloud computing and e-commerce, the same thing is happening now with energy, creating new possibilities of cars, mobility, the integrated, and so on. And it's quite obvious that we have to understand this sort of commercial explosion here uh, that we see in exponential change on data, network, cloud, smart, ultimately leading to sustainable everything. And that is the final destination that we need to get to. That will probably be around 2040 or so, is my estimation, that we can make that happen. Then we can go back and actually fix what we've uh, what we've caused before uh, by carbon sequestration and so on. That's also a very big business unfolding and where people are already investing to get ready for that future. So as we look in this future, then basically the climate technology question is right up front here. Larry Fink, the uh, the guy who runs BlackRock uh, funds, you know, he, he always talks about the hundred uh, next hundred uh, unicorns will be in climate tech innovation and climate tech technology. Looking at all those points, battery storage, battery recycling, position agriculture, new ways of food, new ways of, of desalination, of course, as well, hydrogen waste components, and on and on. I mean, this is all in the next 10 years. It will take 20 years to play out, but this is a huge ticket uh, to entire shift to a new way of looking at the world in a very large way, including things like vertical farming which are vastly expensive and being trialed in different places. I think by 2050, we're going to have every major city, especially in hot countries and developing countries, have huge high-rises of 100 floors where the robots are doing their work with organic farming. Uh, and also, of course, decentralized, right? <laughs> being in the place where we need it. Uh, this kind of idea, impossible, we have to strike from our vocabulary. Impossible is no longer really a good word. Uh, everything is possible. The question is, is it desirable? You know, and, and how do we control it? And how do we make sure it's fair to everybody involved? So that brings me to an important point, as Buckminster Fuller, a famous futurist from the 70s, said, humanity is acquiring all the right technology but for the wrong reasons. And I would add, using it for the wrong reasons. So science and technology are great, but they will not just save us by existence, right? They will save us if we put it together with wisdom. 
as the whole world is resetting into a new way of doing things, and especially since COVID and the war, this is now a big topic, a new global geopolitics, a, a, a move to sustainability, the climate emergency, right? This is a very big total reset and reboot of pretty much every industry. There's a new paradigm coming in, and that paradigm goes beyond the traditional definition of what we want, you know, GDP, profit and growth, to a larger story, people, planet, purpose and prosperity. And I'm sure you heard about Al Alkington and people, planet, profit for 20 years, but now this is a real story that's unfolding where, where we can see how that works out for us, creating new stock markets, creating new possibilities, creating new ways of working together with a larger agenda where CEOs and companies only get paid and pay dividends when all those four boxes are ticked. That is coming, and look for a new stock market, uh, by the way, for that to, to support that. I call that jokingly the SUSDAC, like the NASDAQ, uh, for sustainable products and sustainable companies. So also important is the human sustainability, right? The more we connect, the more we must protect what makes us human. Technology and humanity must have a handshake and then also limitations to that handshake so that we can still be human and remain human despite the fact that we have a complete connected world. And going back just 20 years ago, you know, we had ecosystems running water, food, agriculture, banking, and of course, energy, right? Uh, individual companies or countries. And now we're looking at an ecosystem. Right? Every good solution today is no longer ego, but eco. So we're on this trip from ego to eco, right? to creating an economy that works together, that hyper collaborates, that looks at innovative solutions together. Right? This graph kind of shows really what's happening, for example, in the car industry and, you know, of course, in energy. Uh, going away from the sort of ecosystem of transportation and energy, uh, the gasoline economy, right, towards an ecosystem, right, towards a system that collaborates, that works together, that creates entirely new possibilities. That's where the new money is. That's where everything is going to be about collaboration, multilateralism, right? global collaboration, a global consciousness. That, that's the only ticket for us, for humanity to reach what we want, a holistic view, right? Uh, so when you're looking at water and this nation, don't just look at this one turf, look at the neighboring turfs, and clearly you're doing that in this conference. So energy, agriculture, environment, that all hangs together. With a larger view, we can be much more successful than taking a limited view. The speed of change right, is just mind-boggling. Yeah. Uh, and you could, look, you could spend all day looking at new things. And really what we need is to develop a future mindset, to pay attention, right? to listen. And the future mindset is not a skill, it's a personality trait. We're open to discussion, we're questioning our assumptions. We stop saying it's impossible or can't be done or it shouldn't be done, right? We think about things together, for example, also in a holistic way of saying that we are curious and interested, right? What we're taking pro-action, but we're also cautious about not doing anything stupid. The future mindset requires roughly one hour a day spent in the future. And I'm not talking about watching movies here. <laughs> I'm talking about reading the important books, talking to people about the future. When you have a future mindset, you win. And I bet you the, the country and the, and the city and the government that has a future mindset is going to win in the global competition uh, for being a, le a leader, a thought leader in this new world. Clearly, also, the other thing that's happening is that machines are becoming kind of intelligent. Right? Machine learning, deep learning, AI, well, that intelligence is not at all like humans. You know, it's a binary intelligence, but it's extremely powerful. And I think Stuart Russell, the AI researcher and writer, once said that it should be all about competence of these systems, not consciousness. We don't want machines to be conscious or to develop AGI, artificial general intelligence. We want them to just get the job done. And so really what's happening here is that we have this pyramid where machines are starting to do the, the jobs down here, right? Intellectual knowledge, logic, data and information. And we have to move up the pyramid towards deeper knowledge, tacit knowledge, understand. That's what we're doing here, right? To create wisdom, purpose, consciousness, human agency. Uh, a philosopher once said, I think it was a Zen Buddhist the saying, where, they, uh, where it's being said that basically knowledge without wisdom is useless. And this is what we are, humans, right? And this is what we have to teach our kids. And it's really about this part, not about knowing everything, but understanding things. That's going to be really important to solve large and wicked problems like water, desalination, energy, food. That's going to be needed to understand 
things rather than to just know numbers and 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 follow the math right uh, imagination is going to be the crucial tool as i mentioned right in the beginning and the other thing is a as a kind of an ethical component as we're moving into the future that's completely connected you know how do we stay human how do we stay connected because you know people want to connect in person and that's really what we are we're kind of in a situation where we are surrounded by technology the game changes i mentioned earlier ai big data cloud computing but we're also going to need to come back to ourselves to nature and there's even a name for this problem called nature deficit disorder you know that we're we're getting pulled out of nature because we're constantly looking at at screens and machines and virtual reality that is going to be really important nature positive investment means also coming back to nature and and coming back to ourselves really important that we don't get lost in the shuffle of what technology can do because ultimately we're not machines we're humans connecting to each other so here are the six future principles and i mentioned three of them in my very first section that's exponential uh, uh, convergent and and combinatory but now there's six of them and here they are so this is kind of the the program of what we have to look for so holistic right that means looking at everything around us making sure it's beneficial for everyone the circular economy nothing will exist in the future without giving back right, and putting it back into a positive circle and ultimately of course the human aspect right? human flourishing so this is something to print out and put on your wall these are the six future principles that's how you're going to be successful i think companies that do this and countries that do this and governments that do this are on the right track because it creates vast amount of benefits for everybody in the system in the six future principles